Setting off at the break of dawn, these men are on a mission in the Niger Delta, part of a force drawn from various security agencies and civilians tasked with curbing oil theft. An hour into their patrol in southern Ijaw, they arrest suspects and order them to reveal the location of their illegal business. They make their way from the open creek into the thick mangrove. They strike gold. This is where stolen crude is refined. They destroy the site and set it on fire. Stand this boat, stand this boat, stand. We have to move back. It's a dangerous business. Explosions can happen at any moment, and the fire can extend miles over the water. Within seconds, the area is engulfed in darkness. This is where they are doing their bunkering. Now, as you can see, that everywhere is smoking. Burning their camps, they have surrendered. So Despite these efforts, oil theft in Nigeria is at its highest levels in five years since the government gave amnesty to former rebels in the area. The government says $8 billion in revenue were lost to industrial scale theft last year, and multinational oil giants have started reducing their onshore presence here, selling off fields as a result of the theft. Tucked in the forest, we find these men cooking oil, as it's called here. Their site had been destroyed before, but they came back. There is nothing we do for a living. This is the, our only source of wealth that we do and eat. Without this thing, we can't survive. On a good day, these workers at one end of a vast organized crime chain can make $200. The oil pipelines crisscross their community. The poverty of those living around the source of Nigeria's wealth is bare to see. The majority of the stolen crude does not get refined here in the Niger Delta. Larger bunkering operations involve transferring the crude to barges. The barges then take it to larger tankers in the Atlantic Ocean and from there to buyers in West Africa, Europe, Latin America and as far as Asia. Activists monitoring the industry say connected individuals and security personnel are involved. Those who ought to have protected the pipelines, those who ought to have helped the Nigerian economy are now participants in the subject matter. High-placed politicians at Abuja, at, at the local end, are participating in the business. Despite low-level arrests, there have been no serious large-scale prosecutions. Until those at the helm of this illegal trade are held to account, Nigeria's riches will keep burning away. Raul Al Jazeera, Bayelsa State, Southern Nigeria.